Hey, grace and peace. I'm Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Bible Study, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. And we're continuing our look at 1 John. God is light. God is love. And this week we've been looking through 1 John verses 310 through 324, concentrating on love is sacrifice. John defines love by the sacrifice of Christ. Christ's willingness to sacrifice himself for us is John's definition of what love truly is. In this, our third video of the week, we're going to connect to the rest of scriptures, and we're going to talk about hate and murder. But anyways, because of the reference to Cain in this passage, we're going to be looking at that story and some other places in Scripture where murder is talked about. But first, let's look at the couple verses here in 1 John that deal with this subject. Unlike Cain, who was the evil, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. The one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. So I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Cain and Abel. It's one of the very beginning stories in Genesis coming out of Genesis 4. But let's just review it real quick. And I'm going to read to you the passage of scripture from Genesis. Adam was intimate with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have had a male child with the Lord's help. Then she also gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel became a shepherd of flocks, but Cain worked the ground. In the course of time, Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also presented an offering, some of the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but he did not have regard for Cain and his offering. Cain was furious and he looked despondent. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you so furious and why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain said to his brother, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's guardian? Then he said, what have your, you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed, alienated from the ground that opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood you have shed. If you work the ground, it will never again give you its yield. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. But Cain answered the Lord, my punishment is too great to bear. Since you are banished me, me today from the soil, I must hide myself from your presence and become a restless wanderer on the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord replied to him, in that case, whoever kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. And he placed a mark on Cain so that whoever found him would not kill him. Then Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. So that's the basic story. Basically, Adam and Eve, the very first two human beings, had two kids, Abel and Cain. And Abel, Cain was born first. Abel was born second. Cain gave some um, of the first fruits of his crop. Abel gave some of the first fruit of his flocks. God liked Abel's offering. God didn't like Cain's offering. Instead of Cain repairing his relationship with God, Cain took out the competition and killed his brother, which made it even worse. And then we have Cain cursed outside of, it, it, it kind of separated him from the soil, from the land, and it also damaged his relationship with God and put him into exile. Now, 
looking at this, just, just some questions as we regard here. Why was Cain's offering not accepted? Actually, we don't know. Something was different about Cain's offering from Abel's. Abel's was accepted. Cain's was not. The text does not actually tell us what was wrong with Cain's offering. A lot of times this happens in the Old Testament, especially the Torah, where someone is accused of sinning in a narrative form, in a story form, yet we don't have all the details to really know what was the sin that they did. It doesn't explain, well, this sin is here. And it makes us question and makes us wonder, what did they do wrong? And it doesn't say like, and it keeps us trying to figure out and keeps our conscience pricked that we need to relate to God in a personal way instead of just in a legalistic way. If we knew exactly what Cain had done wrong, we would not do that thing. But really, it wasn't necessarily what Cain had done wrong. It was probably his heart attitude when he did it. But so we look at this and we see John, and this was kind of the piece of the story last um, video, video two in this week, that love is defined as Christ sacrificing himself for us. Murder is the antithesis of this. Cain is in competition with Abel for God's approval, at least from Cain's standpoint. Abel's accepted, Cain's not. So Cain's assumption is that if he takes out Abel, then God will be forced to accept Cain as the only one left. Now, it's interesting that by murdering someone created in the image of God, bearing God's image, Cain hoped to relate to the God that created or the God that was pictured in Abel. And Cain hoped to better relate to God because Abel, by killing Abel, because the one who was already in good relationships with God. Some of this doesn't really make sense. But we see Cain murdering Abel because Abel is accepted and Cain is not. And Cain thinks removing Abel from the equation will help him get accepted. Jesus has a lot to say about this. this. This do not murder shows up in the Ten Commandments. And Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, also quoting the Ten Commandments, looks at this idea of murder. You have heard it said, well, you have heard that it was said to our ancestors, do not murder. Whoever murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Whoever says to his brother, fool, will be subject to the Sanhedrin. But whoever says, you moron, will be subject to hellfire. So if you are offering your gift on the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Reach a settlement quickly with your adversary while you're on the way with him or your adversary will hand you over to the judge, the judge to the officer, and you will be thrown in prison. I assure you, you will never get out of there until you have paid the last penny. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but this idea of murder and hatred being combined together, this idea of how you relate to your brothers affects your worship of God. If you're hating your brother, if you're at conflict with your brother, you will be and have an impediment in your worship of God. Kind of sounds like First John a little bit, you know, the love of brothers is obeying God's command, which shows that you love God. Now, how this all plays out and everything like that is kind of complicated and probably too big for this video, but think this through. Your brother, especially if they're a Christian, Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for your brother. 
Jesus Christ also sacrificed himself for you. That should form a bond between you two that is thicker than anything else. But quite often, murder, hatred is a competition. We see this other person as getting in the way of what we think we need. Even if that is, we think we need to be right with God, we think that this person is competing for us, with us for God's favor. <clears throat> so we try to, in some way, prop ourselves up over this person so that we will be spiritually blessed before they are. We, some of the ways we hate others is we try to get God's spiritual blessing. We try to show how we deserve God's spiritual blessing, and they do not. We point out to God the reasons why they don't deserve to be blessed in hopes that that moves us farther up in line in the God blessing things. My definition of hate is to try to sacrifice somebody else for my spiritual benefit or my benefit. I hate you when I am willing to hurt you for my good. Who are you willing to sacrifice for your own sake? This is kind of my summation of it. I need to, in some way, make sure that God sees me in a better spiritual light than them, so that I will be more favored by God than they are. I need to sacrifice their spiritual well-being before God to ensure my own. Nobody would assume this, but we are guilty of this sometimes. We are guilty of this a lot. We're not willing to sacrifice ourselves for others, but we want them sacrificed for us. Christ sacrifices everything that he has to ensure the spiritual well-being of others. This is love. This love is our example, meaning that try to, trying to hurt others for our sake actually leads us further from God instead of closer. With that said, there are two ways you can join that conversation, Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom, weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and WordPress. As always, I am all over social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, and YouTube. Those links are in the description. Thank you for joining me in our conversation through First John so far. I hope to continue this sometime very soon.